love our creator-owned titles here at Kapow, and so we were pleased to see DC releasing a new creator-owned title called Insurgent. Yeah, it's good to see DC scooping up some of these titles that were originally meant to come out through Wildstorm mm -hmm. uh, before the imprint was closed down. But is Insurgent worth saving? Well, that really is the question, it isn't is, it, sir? Yeah. Now, the plot revolves around a failed super soldier program where people were enhanced by robotics and then hidden within the general populace. Mm. Unsurprisingly, it all goes horribly, horribly wrong. Not a and they, no, not at all. Yeah. And they have to pull in a private contractor called John Ravain to terminate the insurgent program. Yeah, so we see Ravain taking out the uh, what he believes to be the last of the insurgents, and then we flash forward ten years yep. to find out that. Again, unsurprisingly, uh, there are a number of these insurgents still out there hidden within society. And so Ravain is called out of retirement for one last job. Yes, there is a heavy Blade Runner vibe running through this yeah, series, really, isn't it? There really is. I think Ravain is basically Deckard from uh, Blade <laughs> Runner. It's clearly a massive inspiration for yep. the story. Um, but I've got to say, I think writers uh, FJ DeSanto and Todd uh, Farmer really just rummaged around in a sack full of action movie <laughs> cliches and pulled out Insurgent. There's not really much in the way of fresh ideas There's here. There's not, and i got to say, even with the artwork, there's not really much going on mm. there either. Federico Delacchio has uh, a bit of a flat and textureless mm. feel to a lot of these panels, and unfortunately it comes out in the faces, which is where oh, we get yeah, our main so point of empathy. Yeah. So you really don't have any emotional content to any of these Not characters. Really, no. They're just there, mm. cardboard cutouts. Although I will say some of the action sequences were quite engaging. There was a good cause and effect to them. Yeah. I, you look, I know this is an action story, <laughs> but I don't think that gives it an excuse for this kind of paint by numbers storytelling, do you? Okay, no, not entirely. Look, mm. uh, if you're going to go into this one, please don't go into it expecting anything new or fresh or even surprising, because mm. if you've watched any kind of action film from the 80s, you're going to know how this is going to end up. Yeah. But I think I have a soft spot for that kind of action cliche. And you're going to get some decent assassin versus cyborg action. So for me, it's a borrow. It's a low borrow, but it's a borrow. I think you are being way too generous on this one. <laughs> I get, yeah, it's it's an action story. It's but action. They, this is a very familiar story, very badly told. <laughs> and I think you are being way too nice on this. I mean... There are moments, I mean, from when Ravain adopts the daughter of the last insurgent yeah. that he kills and raises her at his own, and, and then when the, the big bad guy shows up wearing a white trench coat and a Hannibal Lecter mask, there were and it's moments, obviously a bad guy. There were moments in here that almost made me cringe. I think they I've made me laugh. Oh, which also not good. <laughs> Honestly, this may not be quite bad enough for a burn. I, I have read worse things, yes. but it's definitely bad enough for a berry. Oh. So, mm, berry. Oh. Yeah. Poor Ravain. Yeah, I'm gonna go watch an Arnie film or something. It's, ugh.